Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to Box Mining. So I just got back to Hong Kong after a 17 hour flight. So if I look like absolute shit, that's probably why. But I wanted to do a very quick update on all the news that's happening. And in terms of the markets, it's actually not that much. If you look at what's happening right now, Bitcoin, Ethereum barely moved since I got on the flight. And even if you look at the altcoins, the top 10, 20 changes of the day, it's barely enough anything. So what do we do in that time then? Well, obviously it's to look at the whole drama that's happening with Bitcoin Cash. And the only way to enjoy this debate properly is with some popcorn. And that's what I get from microwaving popcorn that's two years old. Anyways, so what's happening in this situation? Well, if you, know, if you guys know, Bitcoin Cash had an alliance with a few notable members like Roger Ver, you got Jihan Wu from Bitmain, and you also get Craig Stephen Wright, who claims himself to be Satoshi Nakamoto. It seems like there's an ideological split between these camps right now. So what's happening is Craig Wright, he is declaring this war on Roger Ver, and this email ends with, I am Satoshi. Have a nice life you will now discover me when pissed off and know you could not you could have had proof your choice fuck you craig so full-on declaration of war throwing mud at each other as if they're six-year-old boys and what's happening right now is that it's going through this ideological split one part of the camp with roger ver and jihan wu they want to move to something called bitcoin abc an upgrade to the network but craig wright disagrees with this change he wants to move to something called bitcoin satoshi's vision after all he claims to be satoshi himself so at this point of time, it seems like because of this ideological split, there is going to be a contentious hard fork in the sense that Bitcoin Cash is going to split into two coins. So a lot of people, they've been asking me, OK, what's the value of these coins? What's going to happen? Well, if you have a if you have Bitcoin Cash right now, it's going to split into these coins and you're going to have a one to one ratio of Bitcoin Satoshi's vision or Bitcoin ABC. So right now, being the opportunist, Pinoleon you can trade the futures, the potentials for these two coins already. So it's labeled as BCH ABC or BCH SV Satoshi's vision. So the contentious fork is really led by Craig Wright, and he really tries to lay claim to the throne of Satoshi Nakamoto. But the biggest issue here is, of course, in this community, a lot of people refute that claim because of the way that he tried to claim that he is Satoshi by proving to that to a few select members in the Bitcoin community and not to the rest of us. So what I do believe and what I do agree with Vitalik is that if you want to signal and prove that you are someone, you're going to send the strongest signal. And the strongest signal, of course, is to move Satoshi's Bitcoins. Satoshi himself, he owns 1 million Bitcoins, or well, slightly shy of 1 million, and we know his addresses. So the easiest way that someone wants to prove that they are Satoshi Nakamoto is to send these Bitcoins to an address. You can use, even use a vanity address like Craig Wright Tones or something like that and use a dress like that send it like tweet it out beforehand send it two hours later boom you got proof right there that would be the strongest signal of course um, in the world but unfortunately that's not this is not offered by craig right so it, it's like a thing i'm struggling with comprehending like how is this guy still around in this space even though you cannot offer any claim that you're satoshi it's not like you know you're satoshi unless proven otherwise to claim credit for someone's work you gotta prove it so there's your popcorn moment why is it still around and in many cases, I just wonder, you know, how would outsiders see situations like this? Moving forward, I think this is a very characteristic, uh, this mudsling is very characteristic of technology that's very early in development, which is what cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is. The fact is that it's very, very hard for people to understand what's really happening. But the good thing is that as a community as a whole, we can learn together and kind of dispel some of these kind of lies in the space. Something that's also not cool is that it seems like a cryptocurrency exchange in South Korea is pulling an exit scam. So it seems like there's $30 million worth of user funds deposited in this exchange called PureBit. And what is here, it seems that they, they are closing the website with um, a phrase which translates to I'm sorry. Yikes. 
it seems like they had more than $30 million worth of user funds and they pulled that out and they tried to even to send it into Upbit, another Korean exchange, but they were found out. Like it's just completely dishonest. And one thing that we do need is if there are exchanges in this place that are not decentralized. So if it's not a decentralized exchange will protect you from this because obviously with a DEX, you hold the funds. But with centralized exchanges, they need to have user registration and protection in this space. Otherwise, we're not going to get anywhere. So last bit of news is with China. There's been a lot of confusion recently as some people have taken the opportunity to say that China is legalizing Bitcoin or reversing the Bitcoin ban. But that's actually not true. This really originates from this classification by a local court in China that Bitcoin is property. So this goes with one of the legal disputes. And at that time, the judge felt, well, let's put let's apply property law to it. But this doesn't change any of the central party's rulings that Bitcoin exchange are banned and well you can't really build on top of a lot of Bitcoin stuff but there is one caveat to that as well because in China what we do know is that there still are gray areas and this is something that I've been speaking to Jason from Sora a lot and I'll be also exploring the Sora summit as well so this is going to be held in Macau which is part of China but in a special administrative region so it's going to be um, a lot more free for people to talk there and it holds a lot of Chinese projects as well so we have Patrick Dai from Quantum we also have um, Fabushi Capital being there so what I'm trying to do in the Sora event is try to talk to people about what is the real status of Bitcoin in China. And lastly, guys, if you guys play Hearthstone, I'm wearing my Hearthstone shirt today. Um, quick reminder, you can log in today and you get like six free packs. So that ends on November the 11th. And that's all for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Shoot all your questions about China down below. And well, I hope to see you next episode.